Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Skybees. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Very good, very good. I'm very happy to hear that. In between the episodes, I did a little bit of work. So, I did upgrade our blood altar so it's much more efficient. It's still tier 3 but we have more runes of sacrifice and we have runes of capacity. So when I stab myself, we get a lot of blood. I also made a very small expansion to our astral sorcery area so that we can have attunement. And I expanded our apiary area because we want to have some centrifuges. I tried the pixel art, it's not working. Anyways, the most important thing that I did is in the nether. Actually, we should take some gold, because I have completed the bartering system. There you go. We have six piglins, we're dropping them gold, and we're getting a lot of goodies. So first off, underneath each piglin there is a hopper and everything funnels into a chest, which is down here. Then I have some logistical sorters from mechanism, which are filtering out everything. These are the items that I'm throwing away because we don't need them, and these are the items that I'm keeping. In this mod pack, we do not have the ender storage mod which will give us ender chests, but we have a substitute, and it's called dimensional storage. It's basically an ender chest and you can set up a frequency. There is another one of these guys hooked up to my applied energistic system and is importing the goods. We just give them the gold. I was poor, I could only afford advanced versions of the logistical pipes. Anyways, these guys trade and they give us goodies. And so far, we have a decent supply of blackstone. And that makes me very happy. But before starting today's episode, let us do a few quality of life improvements. I have to run around the base a lot, so let us make a Sojourner's Sash, which is not a quest. Really? Okay, I don't care. We can jump higher and run faster. Also, if we gather some leaves and the oak, and if we have spider eyes, which we have only three, we can get a rune of slot. Sorry, we get a rune of autumn. And then we can get a rune of slot. So I would be able to make my rod of the shifting crust. Also, we need to sleep. Sleep. When you spend too much time in the nether, you kind of forget the time. Anyways, I was going to try and say instead of carrying all this equipment, can we just make an atomic disassembler? Because the energy tablet is easy peasy. I already made it for the configurator. We need one osmium compressor which for some reason is a quest. Oh, you cannot crush obsidian in a crusher. It's fine, we can afford an enrichment chamber. Yeah, that works. These machines are extremely slow. Can we upgrade some of them? For the moment, we don't have that much osmium, so we're going to dabble it. We can upgrade a few of our infused alloy into reinforced. Then we should be able to get some reinforced obsidian dust. And with a bit of osmium, we should get the ingot. There you go. Now the only thing we need is an atomic alloy, which is easy peasy. Perfect. And here is my atomic disassembler. So for the moment we don't need you guys anymore and I can charge you. I was thinking why this one is so slow. This is 400,000 RF. The assembler was 24,000. Okay, can we put you on super fast mode? Yes. Now that we have done some quality of life improvements, what is the plan? Well, first off, we need to automate the bees. Eventually we are going to have four tier four apiaries. So one centrifuge should not be enough. Or at least I don't think it's going to be enough. So we are going to craft one more elite centrifuge. Here is the controller and I forgot how many casings we need. 40? No. It's okay. We're rich. We can waste resources. The question is where do we put it? Maybe here. Right? Yeah, exactly. Why not? It's not a terrible place. Oh, this place is uneven. I need to add two more blocks on that side. It's okay. I just noticed it. Oh, and by the way, this second centrifuge that you see over here is the one that we already had. I just thought that we put both of them in the same place. Almost. There might be better ways of doing this, but I am actually going to try and automate everything with our bees and the apiaries using Xnet. Because I think it's easier and far more efficient. So obviously we are going to require a controller, some cables, and some connectors. I don't know how many we need. Six should be enough. But we will upgrade them to the advanced version. Oh, we can make seven? I have two extra dimensional chests, but we need a few more. The recipe is not that bad. Oh, and I forgot the most important thing. We need some logistical transporters and obviously a trash can. This is actually not very ideal for automation because they are too far away and we have to make cables. But in this mod pack, we don't have that much automation to do, so cabling is going to be limited anyways. So what I'm going to do is that underneath each apiary storage, we are going to have a dimensional chest. We are going to change it to frequency 2, because frequency 1 is the one that I'm using for my applied energistic system and we don't want them to mix up. And then we just add a logistical transporter and extract. I just did the exact same thing for the second one and we're good to go. Well, we're not good to go, but we can start. 
Is this three blocks deep or four? Oh, it's four. Nice. This is called thinking ahead. So let us figure out the automation. We are going to have the XNet controller over here. It's going to require RF, so I do have a flux point. But now we need to provide power to the centrifuges. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have a connector on top of the flux point, and you should connect, and we should have one more connector on the controller. Oh, you don't connect. Ew. Yeah, you don't connect. It's okay, for the moment we should be able to hook up the flux point into an energy cell from power, which can handle 8000 RF per tick. So we need 4 of the starters, then I can make 2 basics, and I can upgrade those basics into hardened. No. Oh, I'm missing the casing. There you go. So let's try this one more time. If we have the energy cell over here, and we put the flux point under the energy cell. We're good, right? Yes. Now, can I hook you up to a connector? Yes. So we are also going to add one more connector under each centrifuge. And then we just run a cable. So everything is connected, right? Yes, our XNet controller is recognizing the energy cell and two centrifuges. And obviously himself. So we're going to make one channel for energy. And if we come over to the energy cell, we're going to create one channel and we're going to extract energy. And we're going to insert it into the centrifuges. So you should have power. You should also have power. Perfect. This cabling could have been much more neat, but it's okay for the moment. So we are going to have a dimensional chest over here, and I'm going to set it to frequency 2, which is for the honeycombs. Now we have to make another channel with the controller for items. This is the one. We extract items from the dimensional chest. We don't want it to be single, we want it to be stacks. And we want it to be round robin, so that it will be distributed equally between the centrifuges. We are extracting from the dimensional chest, we just have to insert it into the centrifuge. Now they should be working. Awesome. You too. It's also not a bad idea if we have some torches. So now that we're getting everything from the centrifuges, we need to import them into our applied energistic system. So I'm going to have one more dimensional chest and this time it's going to be frequency 1 and we're going to add one more connector. The thing that I can do is that we're going to make another channel, but this time we're going to extract items from the centrifuges, stacks of items, not single, and insert them into the dimensional chest. This is almost our entire automation. Everything goes inside our applied energistic system. It's very slow. You are on stacks, right? Yeah, it is on stacks, but here's the problem. Um, how do we fix it? We can't decrease the number of ticks per operation. Five ticks. Are you better? Not really. Well, I'm guessing one of the reasons that it's not keeping up is that we're getting so many items at the same time. After a while, it should be fine. But here's the important thing. We also need a trash can because we do not need bee wax anymore, so I'm going to void it. And we can just cover it, right? Oh, and by the way, there's one more thing that we should do. Obviously, we should chunk load the place, but we should also make some dimensional tanks. It's not expensive, okay? Because at this very moment, we are not extracting the honey, it's being kept inside the centrifuge. So we dig again, and I think we should just have the tank over here. It should be okay. I'm going to set you to channel two for honey. So we can have another channel for fluids and we can extract it from the centrifuges and insert it into the tank. Do you have honey? Yes. Are you extracting fast enough? No. We can increase it to 5 buckets per operation. So we do that. Now I think we are done. A dimensional tank only holds 6 buckets. So let us make a few mechanical pipes. And can we get advanced? Yes. Can we get elite? No. Well we do have some alloys. Why not? We can get elite. And this is my last atomic alloy, but it's okay. We get the ultimate version. We're going to extract it from the dimensional tank into a quantum tank, like so. You know what is the problem? We're just extracting from one slot. That's it. How do we fix that? I have absolutely no idea, but as long as we have a backlog, there's nothing I can do. Cause I don't know, is it because we have a lot of backlog or is it because we're not extracting fast enough? Yes, I was correct. If you do not have a backlog, then the system works. And you should also remember that whenever we upgrade the apiaries to tier 3 or 4, we will get the honeycomb blocks. And they do take a longer time to be processed. The issue that we are having right now is that we're getting one item on the first slot like 10 times per second. With the blocks, we should not have this problem. But now that we have access to mechanism, we have unlocked a very important technology. Do you know what it is? We can get nylium. We just need a metallurgic infuser, we put netherrack inside and add mushrooms. It's one to one. Oh, and by the way, since we have mechanism in the pack, we can use the enriching factory to get the pure quartz. So we don't need the crystal growth chambers. I was looking for some bone meal and then I realized we have a lot of bones. I don't remember how we got them. The nether? Anyways, that is not very important. The thing that I'm excited about is nylium. 
This should work like vanilla, right? I can just bone meal? Yes. So now I would be able to get you. Fungus. We actually don't need a crazy amount because we can put it inside the botany pot, but let us get at least one tree. Yes. I have missed you. Holy. <laughs> How do you harvest that? Um, I know it's very stupid, but I needed a jetpack. Oh, we also get the vines. Can you grow them? Yes. In that case, let us make a few botany pots. I need more clay. I think after seven episodes of having stupid furnaces, we deserve a smelter, which is a quest, and we can upgrade it to basic, which is also a quest. So let us make some terracotta. Obviously, we do not need to go that crazy. We just need, I don't know, six. I can't believe my eyes. We can finally start building. Oh, and by the way, making grass from turf is a terrible idea. Just letting you know. But now that we have the alpine portal, we have better means of getting grass. Now that we have access to blackstone, I did a little bit of building and we can double our apiaries. Which is really important to us because I want to finish everything to do with bees today. I also try to work a little bit on our applied energistics area, the block palette is not final, the design is not final, so ignore it for the moment. One very important fact, the apiaries that we have right now are tier 2. And the reason that I did not make a tier 4 was that we need a lot of grass. And basically I was incredibly lazy to get a lot of grass. So now that we have access to the alpine portal, we can get grass. All we need is an alchemy catalyst and one pixie dust. What do you sell? Sharpness looting... capturing. That's useful. Thank you so much. Can I capture you? Nope. It's very sad that people sell you fake products. Anyways, where were we? The conjuration catalyst, which unfortunately we're missing a few pieces of living rock. Nice. They are ready. So here is my conjuration catalyst. And the way that a conjuration catalyst works is that you put it under a mana pool and at the cost of mana, it will dabble some items for you. And one of those items is grass. So we just drop the grass and we should be fine. Although I'm not really sure, how much do we need? Thankfully this is grass, so it's not consuming that much mana. Well, we are out of mana, so I think this is how much we are going to have. We also need a considerable amount of honeycombs. We take the ender ones. I have absolutely no idea how many we can make, but let us get started. Ah, oh, you can make different crooks. I had no idea that this mod pack is so advanced. I just needed some string. That's it. The main reason that I wanted string was to make some beehive frames, because I'm not keeping the vanilla honeycombs and apparently I'm voiding them. And in order to make a beehive, you need the vanilla version. But it's okay, for upgrading it, any honeycomb will do. It's not much. But it's a good start. Now is the part that we need a lot of grass. Actually, we now have a little bit more mana and I can use some more grass. So tier 2, tier 3, and don't you worry, the only thing that we're missing is honeycomb blocks. And there is a stupid amount of it everywhere. We can make 50 of the tier 3. Okay, either I'm making too many beehives or I underestimated how much honeycomb we need. Don't really know which one it is. Yeah, I think I underestimated how much honeycomb we need. It's okay, I do have a plan. If we manage to make one tier 1 apiary, we can make another tier 2, and we have two of them over here, so we can make one tier 3, right? These don't stack. We're going to take the bees out of this apiary, and we're going to install the tier 3, and it's facing the wrong way, like so? Yes. And I do have a lot of vanilla bees inside, so we're going to use them. You should not have more than one unique bee inside each apiary, but I don't know, maybe this works. I need it temporarily anyways. And do you know what? The best thing about the tier 3 apiary is that it will give us the blocks. Yes, we get blocks. Seems that I have greatly underestimated how much honeycombs we are going to need, but it's not a huge problem because we had two fully functioning apiaries and I cut them off from the centrifuge. So basically right now we have unlimited supply of honeycombs. Actually, I think it's easier to drop everything on the ground and then craft it. Also in the meantime that I'm trying to craft everything, there is something that I can explain. Because normally when I'm cutting the video, the gravity of the situation is not that visible. Because let us face it, this is a tier 2 beehive and this is a tier 2 apiary. Both of them are just one block, but generally speaking, this is the price of a normal beehive, this is the price of a tier 1, this is the price of a tier 2, of a tier 3, and this is the price of a tier 4. But then it gets slightly more complicated, because you need 4 tier 4s in order to make a tier 1 apiary. So these 4 very expensive blocks that you see over here are equal to 1. In order to make a tier 2 apiary, you need 4 tier 1s. 
Anyway, this is a tier 2 apiary. Then you're going to need 4 tier 2s in order to make a tier 3. And the difference between this one and the previous tier is that this one gives you the honeycomb blocks, while a tier 2 just gives you honeycomb. So this is twice as efficient. You would think that is the end of the story, right? No. Unfortunately, it's not, because you need 4 tier 3s in order to make a tier 4. And as usual, whenever you place them down, they never stack. So here is a tier 4 apiary. There you go. And the first thing that we're going to do is that we absolutely have to upgrade one of these guys. Because I definitely need honey. I stole one of the apiary tier 3s from here, so we need to replace this one as well. Because this is going to be my breeder. Actually, if I want to use this guy as a breeder, it does not have to be a tier 2. We can replace it with, I don't know, a tier 1. That's also fine. But now that we have access to a tier 4 apiary, it will give us 8 blocks every time. Alright guys, it has been a while later, and for me it actually has been one day later, but we have 4 tier 4 apiaries. Well, we don't have them yet, but we should be able to craft it. These two that you see over here are already tier 4, here is one more, and here is another one. And I do understand that you can put more than 9 unique bees inside each apiary, but the issue is, our main goal in this mod pack is to try and get the ultimate singularity. If I'm not mistaken, we need around 90,000 of each and every resource, and more apiaries means more resources. You might also notice that by next episode we should be able to upgrade our reactor to the next tier. Well, it's not the next tier, it's spirited tier. Anyways, that is not our main issue. Our main issue is to get all the bees today. What are we missing? We're missing aluminium. A few episodes ago we bred some of the bees and we do have aluminium. We also need bronze, which is tin and copper. Okay, we have tin, this should be copper. So as usual, we just put them inside the breeder, give them the ingots, and one jar. There should be a 100% chance? Yes. Coal we already have, copper we already have, diamond, electrum is something that we don't have. It's not that bad, it's just gold and silver. So again, silver, gold, should give us electrum. And that should also be 100% perfect. If we come to the list, we need emerald, glowstone we have, iron we have, lapis we don't have. Then we need lead. And I was hoping we have nickel, but we also don't have him. Redstone we have, silver we have, steel, tin, and uranium. Here is uranium, and we should be good to go. So nickel is a combination of gravel and sieve. Okay then, let me get all the bees, and I'll be right back. Each of the bees are also going to require one block in order to function. For electrum and bronze, I'm using the alloy kilns. We just need one block of electrum and one bronze. I think we are done. Yes, that is true. We were missing 10 bees. That's it. I just put 9 of them inside this apiary and... Are we good? They're working. Work faster. I think in this apiary I have a vanilla bee, which we don't need him. I don't know what I did with him, but it's okay. We can put the lapis in this one. So one thing that you might notice is that this apiary that we have over here, which is also tier 4, is redundant. We have all the bees and this one is empty. I'm not even sure if the grind of getting a fourth apiary was worth it or not, but uh, I'm going to use this one in case we need an extra resource. Cause you know, the rate that you will get lapis is very different than you get nickel. And in order to make a singularity, we just need 10,000 of each item. So maybe for some items, I need to have more bees. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if I have mentioned or not, but this is our redecoration. Although I'm not exactly sure, will these guys keep up? It's okay, if we need more, I can always make more. So one more thing, in the comments of the previous episode, most of you guys suggested that we should go with vivid grass. So there you go, I'm removing the red one. Oh, it's not very good, it removes the torches. <laughs> so there you go. And just in case you're wondering, this is how fast we are generating resources. I'm happy with that. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Today we did manage to get all the apiaries, get all the bees, and we will have all the resources. That's a good achievement. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.